Oh, shalom, Rastafari. I've been wanting to speak on this subject matter and get these as a like a visual image of what the scripture says, the scripture of truth. And we're going to study right here from the King James Version as a basic first level of this teaching on the two seeds, the two seeds, the seed of the serpent versus the seed of the woman, right? The seed of the woman. Right, so here we have the seed of the serpent, which is from Sumer. This is where we get the Sumerian and the Semiramis and the goddess, the so-called goddess. And this is a figurine from Ubaid in Mesopotamia. And they dated circa 5000 BC. Now, the Kedistan Gumarium, the mother of our Lord Adonai, Adoni Yeshua HaMoshiach, is the black Madonna of the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, Kedamawi Haile Selassie, the elect of God, the king of kings of Ethiopia. That's the Madonna that he commissioned. I think the artist is Afawork uh, Tekla. Right? Afawork Tekla. Right? It's a beautiful image right there. And now the the Ethiopian Tawahedo or Orthodox Tawahedo Church in apostasy, the, some of uh, the professing church, right? Because so you would have to study the scriptures to understand what we're seeing today, even among the careless Ethiopians at home and abroad and among the lost sheep of the Beit Israel and among the world, because there, there are three um, there are three groups. There is the Jews, the real black Jews, the Ethiopian Hebrew, the line of the tribe of Judah people. Then we have the the church, the true church, the Beta Christian. And then we have the Gentiles, the Goyim, or we can say the nations. Right? Now we know from the scriptures from Revelation that it's that old time dragon. Let's just go to Revelation for a moment. Revelation for a moment. And, and let's just pick up here. And then we're going to go into Genesis and lay a basic foundation on this particular teaching as it was in the beginning. So shall it be in the end. So the key for us to know, well, what shall it be like in the end is to study the beginning. So here we're going to go to Revelation chapter 12. And the Holy Spirit has been giving us much reference to Revelation chapter 12. And we're going to pick up, right? We're going to pick up from the archangel, right? And let's uh, move this up here because this is also connective. We have um, Caduceus Georgis, right? Or St. George, right? St. George um, slaying the dragon, right? St. George slaying the dragon. This is a particular emblem, a sign and a seal of the King of Kings, of Negus Masi, of the King Messiah, of Kedemawi Haile Selassie as well. So we also have to connect that and remember what the King of Kings said on May 5th, 1941, five years to the very day, proving that he is the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. Right, the superiority of the faith of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, over the satanic activity that occurred and the martyrdom of the Kedusan, the saints. And we're speaking of the Italian, the fascist invasion of Ethiopia, which so often goes unmentioned when we um, here of Illuminati conspiracies and World War II and one and this and that. They always conveniently ignore that. Well, that's the half of the story. All right. So right here in speaking of the archangel says, and there was war in heaven, Mikael. So we find within Kedus Georgis or St. George is the type, right, of Michael in heaven, right? It's a, it's a template and a type, Mikael who is like, or one who is like El. And we have within the scripture, be perfect as our Avinu, Avinu, Sheba Shemayim, Abuna Sebe Samayat, as our Heavenly Father is perfect. 
All right, it's perfect. So we have to understand the context in the Moshiach, in Yeshua, in Christ. So right here it says, And there was war in heaven, Mikael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. So we see this is precipitating the casting down. Right? The cat, their place. They had a place in heaven. But they're now cast down. So those who are in heaven, right, the angels which fought against the Almighty, which fought against God, and whom Mikael cast down, the dragon and the angels, the fallen angels. So here we get the Nephila, Nephala, Nephalim, Nephilim, the fallen ones, right, the fallen ones. This is according to the scripture. This is according to, it's not according to imagination, because there's many who say, well, the Nephilim are the children of the fallen angels. While well, it's very clear, right, from the context and from the scriptures that they are the fallen ones, right? They are the fallen ones, the fallen angels. That's why it says that they prevailed not, neither was. Let me just go to the last part of verse 7, 12 and 7. And the dragon fought and his angels, the Zendo fought and his Malaikatu. Right, his angels and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called Diablos and Satan or Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the where earth and his angels were cast out with him. So his angels were cast out. That casting out from the earth perspective, the fallen angels, right? Because they were cast into the earth, into the land. Now it says, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength in the kingdom of Eloheinu, of our source, our power, our God, and the power of his Moshiach, right? Moshicho, Moshichu. Christos, right? His Christ, his anointed for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before Eloheinu day and night. Now, just to wrap up right here, let's go to verse 11 and 12. And they overcame him by the what? The blood of the lamb, right? So this power, this force was overcome, right? By the blood of Right? By the blood of the Lamb. Right? By the blood of the Lamb. Right? So that power was overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by their, by I and I, our word of right, testimony and by the word of their testimony. Right? This, this is the key. This is the key right there. The blood of the Lamb and the word of testimony by the word of their testimony and they love not their lives to the death because we know that death right was swallowed up in the victory of Yeshua HaMoshiach right that that death was swallowed up in the victory let's move this right here right just to get this art right here the victory right of Yeshua HaMoshiach Ain of Yeshua HaMoshiach. Ain. Now let's just go on right here. It says, um, Therefore rejoice ye heavens. The heavens now are rejoicing. And ye that dwell in them. In the heavens. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. Now it's very key that they mention the earth and the sea. Ain. The inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. We're going to have call for this as we go forward of the earth and of the sea. Now, why is that so important? Well, as we begin to investigate the so-called aliens and the so-called Illuminati right, phenomena, right, as we start to investigate that, we'll see that the connection with where do these being, beings go even after the flood? How come there's so much um, reference to the sea, you know, with the 
Dagon, the fish cat mitre, and this kind of idea of coming out of the sea, this connection with the waters, the earth, the land, and the sea. Just make a note of that right there, all right? It says, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For Diablos, the devil is come down to you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Right now, here it speaks about Satan, right, and Israel in the tribulation. Verse 13, and when the dragon saw that he was cast out into the earth, he persecuted the woman, right? The womb man, the persecution of the womb man, which brought forth the who? The man child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent, right? Now it goes on and says, and the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood, after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. But she remains, right? But she remains. And there's a key connection with this woman in prophecy and, and righteous and faithful Ethiopia, the Ethiopia of the covenant. There's, there's a key connection here. Remember Amos 9 and 7? Are ye not as the what children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? That's a key connection. It's like saying, you are my children, different mothers, but the same Abinu, the same Abuna, the same Abba, the same Father. Amen? Amen. So it says, and the serpent cast out of his mouth, out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood and the earth helped the woman and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth and the last part of this is speaking to I and I speaking to the remnant right that redeemed beta Ethiopian Hebrew Israelite tribe nation that remnant right that black Jewish black Hebrew Ethiopian Hebrew remnant because it says right here in verse 17 and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Hence, the fascist invasion of Ethiopia or invasions. We can talk about the Battle of Adowa, right? From what, 1896? And we can also speak about the invasion in 1936. Six, six, six. Isn't that interesting? And the dragon... And we know that the dragon is a special symbol of the Vatican. In fact, the name Vatican means divining serpent. Right? So the dragon was wroth with the woman, the true church, the true remnant, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, with the remainder of her seed, which keep, not kept, but keep the commandments of Elohim. And have the testimony of Yeshua HaMoshiach. And that's the church of Philadelphia right there. That's the true church of his majesty. That's the true church within the professing church. Right? The true church within the professing church. Even today, there's that true church. There's that remnant. Even though many have apostated themselves, seeing that we are in Laodicean and the lukewarm church age, and this and, and even a symbol of it is this true symbol of the black Madonna, right? In the place where that image, right? That's just the image, but the keeping of the commandments and the true testimony of Yeshua HaMoshiach, Jesus Christos in spirit and in truth, right? In the spiritual life and in truth, the, the, the true race, racial type. The race is the key. Right? The race is the key. People say they're colorblind, and that's just totally unscriptural. Right? It's not saying, well, one is superior or inferior just because of that. No, but it's saying this is the truth, that Yeshua HaMoshiach is a black man. Right? Or we could say the Ethiopian, that righteous Ethiopian type. So we're connecting the scripture right here because this is, this is a, the context when we speak about the serpent seed. Right? Because we're going to have to now go to the beginning. 
All right, so let's go to the beginning where we sought to begin. And we're going to speak about the Ganet to Aden, right? And this is concerning the second or what's called the Adamic, right? The Adamic covenant, the Adamic covenant. Now let's read from, we're in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 14. And it says, And Yahweh, yod heh weh Elohim, said to the serpent, right? Now in the royal Amharic, we call the serpent the Ibab. Now this is interesting, Ibab. Bob, Bob, Ibob. This is the root when we say Babylonian and Bob El, right? Bob El, Bob El has has a duality of meanings, like has two main meanings, swings on two meanings. One is Bob El, gate of El, right? And the other is Babal, confusion. But from the Ethiopic, from the remnant perspective, Bob El is the serpent, right? The serpent of God. Right or the serpent of El, right? Babel. So we have the gate and the confusion. The gate and confusion. Confusion at the gates. Just keep that in mind. The serpent is Bob, Ibab, the Ibab, right? So Exiavir Amlak Lotusibhat said to the Ibab, "Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle." And above every beast, every aure of the field, upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Now, what's interesting about this dust is the creation of Adam. Adam was made from the afar. The afar, the afar, ofer, the afar is the dust. Right, so the serpent would eat dust. Now this connects also with the Psalms of David, where he says that you know how the evil do is the wicked eat my people, right, as they eat bread. Right? So so that's the connection right there of the serpent and the serpent people, the reptilian agenda. Mm-hmm. But we have to know well where did it begin? How did it begin? So here we're in the Ganetta Aden. Now we look at Aden. And we look at that region of the world, we have the Gulf of Aden, right? So we have Aden, Aden. There's a link there, but let's go forward. So verse 15, it says, And I will put enmity, enmity is hatred, talat, um, talatanet, right? Um, hatred, right? Hatred between thee and the woman. So where was the hatred? The hatred wasn't among the human races. This is what Satan has cast, is hatred. They call it racism. Um, Satan reveals his card in Job. I think it's Job uh, 2 and 4. Mm -hmm. Where in 2 and 4, he says skin for skin. Let's get that verse right here. right? Because it's important for ones to know that when we talk about, well, the whitewashed Mary, this is not against any race. This is the fact that Mary, this in Gilmarium, was not a European and was not white. This is a matter of truth, right? So we, when we speak about grace and truth, it must be about grace and truth. Because if it's not true, then it falls from grace. Here in Job 2, chapter 2, verse 4, it says, And Satan answered Yahweh and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath, Will he give for his life? Right? Will he give for his life? So this is important too because when we follow the Moshia, the Moshia says, he says to us, love not our life, right? To deny ourselves, deny our way of looking at it. And it says that the overcomers do not love their life to the death, right? Because Yeshua Ha Moshia has swallowed up the, 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 the 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 strength the power of the enemy right which is death right which is death that's the power of satan so we have the antidote right for that bite just as the israelites did right you remember with the brazen serpents when they murmured and then moses was instructed to make that brazen serpent that nehushtan and when he raised up the nehushtan the nahash nehushtan that all those who were bitten, when they looked upon the Nehushtan, they were healed, right? They were healed, right, of that snake bite, 
right of that snake bite and this is very very interesting now there's a footer on this right here in the Schofield study bible hopefully we'll get a moment to touch on it but let's go forward right here so there was that enmity right notice who the enmity let's move this over notice who the enmity was put between the enmity that the almighty put because some of the atheists will say oh look at this god god puts enmity between the serpent right right the serpent and the woman the serpent and the woman so we went to revelation to get a little more background on what was the origin right of this serpent right in other words what was the origin of the serpent coming down to where man is at now from the Ganetta aden or the garden of eden we see that the woman mm -hmm, our first mother we can say emma Hiao, she was deceived right but it was the man it was adam who disobeyed right and sought to blame Elohim, right, sought to blame God and sought to blame the woman, right? So we really need to understand the story in its true context, right? Because most of us have a post-history, a Western, white, Western, Gentile misinterpretation of the scripture. And even the racial type is, is key because it's key to the grace and the truth. If it's not true, right, you can have all the grace in the world you want, but then the enemy can hit you on that lie because he's the father of lies. So this is why we speak on the racial type when we speak about the black woman and child. There's a principle, there's an order from the very beginning, right? And so it says the first shall be last. We can see very clearly from archaeology, from study that the ancient black and Ethiopian races were first in the beginning. Right, but our last now, so that's a proof of the veracity of the scriptures if you can receive it. But let's go forward, let's move on. So, we want to put Job, right? Um, Job 2 and 4 as well, skin for skin. So, the enmity that was placed by Yahweh Elohim was clearly between the serpent, right, and the woman, right? The serpent. And the black woman, the serpent and womankind. Originally, the serpent and that black woman, because that's the original type, right? When we when we're going to the beginnings, right? When we get to the beginnings, that's how we're going to overstand and overcome in the end by knowing the beginning. So, verse fifteen, three and fifteen says, "And I will put enmity between thee and the woman." and between thy seed and her seed. Now this is interesting, between thee, the serpent, and the woman, between thy seed, between the serpent's seed, and the woman's seed, Not, right? The woman's seed in the fullness is Adonenu, our black Lord and Savior, Adonai Yeshua HaMoshiach, Jesus Christus Getachin. Our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, or Jesus Christ, if you please. So we can see that enmity, right, between the serpent, right, and the woman, and between the serpent's seed, right, and the woman's seed, right? So when we ask these questions about, well, oh, well, what's wrong with black people, especially the lost sheep in the Americas and the Caribbean, what's wrong with them? This is this enmity. Right, and then the counter, the the, the counter intelligence or the COINTEL pro, because Satan already told you his COINTEL pro. We read it to you in Job chapter two, verse four. He says, "Skin for skin, right? Um, man will give all, right? Man will give all." Let's get that verse right here again. I want to quote it. I want to quote it correctly and commit this to memory because very important to have this word. To be able to stand in and on this word. He says, skin for skin, yea. Skin for skin, yea. All that a man hath will he give for his life. Right? Will he give for his life. So you have to also note that Satan becometh because of Adam's disobedience. He abdicated Adam, who was a bane. Ha Elohim, who was a son of God, Adam, 
He abdicated that primordial black man. He abdicated his rightful rulership. So we also have to see that right there, how man, Adam, abdicates his rightful rulership. And this is one of the reasons why we'll find furthermore in the in the Gospels and the Epistles, right, where it says that Satan, speaking of the enemy, is a god, right, is the god of this world. And, and that's, a, that, that's a very astounding thing that a lot of people really don't understand. So when people talk about God, right, or this God, or God, God, just use God very loosely, we have to really, you know, ask what is his name? Right? You, you know, you have to really describe this God because we know that Satan, right, and, and the and the reptilian agenda is the God or the ruling influence, right, of this world, right? Of this present world um system, this this present world, right? Now, going on, it says that it shall bruise, right? It shall bruise thy head, right? So the seed of the woman, let's get his foot right there. The seed of the woman, right? Who is the son of the, the woman, Christian Gamarium, right? Lord Yeshua shall bruise Adoni. Yeshua shall bruise the head of the serpent seed, shall bruise the head. Rastafari shall bruise the head, the Ras, right? But then it says right here, and thou, speaking to the serpent, and thou shall bruise his heel, and thou shall bruise his heel. Now this is this is very this is a very important point right here. There's much that's packed in to this phrase right there. Each phrase here. We have, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman. Identify who we're speaking of, the serpent, the serpent seed, and the woman seed. Right? And between thy seed and her seed. So this would be generationally. We, we have this generational enmity. Right? So we're speaking of two um, living types of entities. The serpent entity right, the reptilian entity, right, and true humanity, right, from the beginning, right, to this present end times, and it, or it really, it really should say, and he, right, and he shall bruise thy head, right, he, Yeshua HaMoshi, our black Lord and Savior, shall bruise the head, right, of the serpent, right, and thou shall bruise his heel, and thou shall bruise whose? His heel. All right? Shall bruise his heel. Now, I want you to check this out. Let's listen to what was said now to the woman. Right? And to the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. All right? Remember, this is under the curses. Right? Th that having children is not a curse. See, the Satan would like ones to believe that, and many be lie Eve, be lie Eve that, right? But it says, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow, right? And thy conception, or some interpreters, exegesis, say thy sorrow in conception, right? In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, right? Why is that sorrow? Many people want to, oh, it's just the pain of childbirth, but that's not what it's speaking about. It's this warfare, right? It's this old time warfare between the seed of the serpent and the black woman, right? Black woman, according to the original type and, and femininity, we could say motherhood in general. Remember, we said there are three types. There's to the Jews, the church, and to the Gentiles. So we have to put this in proper order. Right? So let's go forward right here. It says, In sorrow, in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire, right? Thy fakad, thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall do what? Rule over thee. Now, this is also something that gets greatly twisted out of shape in the and amongst the Western Gentile. Right, the Goyim, so-called Christians. Right, so this whole idea of the man ruling over the woman. 
this was not the way they, they make you believe, be lie you, right? It's because Adam had abdicated his proper authority, his proper responsibility. So that meant that the man, right, should be responsible, right? This was not rule in the sense that Satan has fooled humanity. Oh, the man, he rule over the woman. No, it is to protect that stargate, to protect that birthing matrix, right? And to be cognizant of the role and responsibility, right? The responsibility to that messianic, that Mushia seed, right? Because all along this way, right? From such a time to the, to the present time, there has been a war on the black woman and child. In fact, if you look at what's going on with the so-called black woman, especially in the Americas, people say, what has happened to the black woman, right? And the state of the black community can be very much tied or any community to that matrix, because this is where that life, this is where the generation comes. So the generation curse and the generation blessing lieth at the gates, if you can receive it, right? But it goes on to say, and to Adam, he said, because, listen, because thou hast hearkened to the voice of thy wife, right? Instead of, right, teaching his wife, because remember, Adam was there. So if Haywan or Eve, right, was deceived, that has something to do with what Adam communicated, because she added on, thou shall not eat of it. And she said, and not to touch it. That's not what Adam was taught. So Haywan, Eve wasn't there when Adam was given those instructions. This is why the scripture says that because of one man's disobedience, right? All were made sinners, right? Because of the Adam pattern. Adam set a certain faulty pattern, right? And because of one man's obedience, even the grown up son, Yeshua HaMoshiach, right? all are made righteous, right? All become righteous, right? If they choose, because remember the important thing is the choice factor, very important, the choice factor. Go before ones is life, right? And death, right? Choose life, right? As Moses was told to say to the Israelites before you have set two ways, life, right? And death choose life in Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMoshiach. Amen, B'Shem Yeshua. So to Adam who said, because thou hast hearkened to the voice of thy wife and has eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee. In other words, he did not hearken, right, to Elohim who, who instructed him, who gave him that instruction, right? It's, it's obvious he did not hearken to Elohim and what he communicated to Hawa. Otherwise, she would not have added, and thou should not touch it. And he was right there. But let's not get into that right now. Let's just get an overview right here saying, thou should not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. And it says, in sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. So what we see coming into the matrix is sorrow, is the consequences of the disobedience, the consequences of of the choice, right? The consequences of the choice. It says, thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb or the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face that shalt thou eat bread till thou return to the ground, the Adama, for out of it, speaking of Adam, from the Adama, was thou taken for dust, afar, ofar, afar, right? For the afar, afar, thou art. And to dust, the afar, the afar, shalt thou return. Now, with that context right there of the second, or what we can call the Adamic, right? That's what's called the Adamic covenant. Right, the Adamic covenant. Because these two ways, let me share this right here. This this illumination, I think, is right over here. Because of 
the choice of these two ways, right? We have the Book of the Living, right? And the Book of the Dead, right? Or the Living and the Dead, right? We can see this clearly illustrated in this illumination right here, right? And we see the seed of the woman, right? Yeshua HaMoshiach, the cross, the finding of the true cross and the seed of the woman, right? The living, right? Those who are written in the book of life and the dead. But even amongst the dead, that mercy that this child, right? This child is being saved, right? Redeemed, in other words, from the dead, right? So you can see this difference right here. This is a beautiful, I call it the Black Messiah, Ethiopian Christ judgment, right? Judgment day, living and dead. This is what we call this particular one right here, right? So what do we have right here? We have the, let's speak on, let's speak on the Adamic covenant, right? This Adamic covenant, because in order to understand what's really going on with these angels, UFOs, and demons, is, is predicated on how well we understand the context of this right here. And we can interpret the evidence within the scripture with the evidence that we are finding based on the various information and dissemination and the videos and the other, you know, in this time where knowledge is going to and fro, right? So the Adamic covenant, it conditions the life of fallen man. Now we have the fallen angels, right? The, the, the angels that became demons, the fallen angels, right? Then we have the serpent. Then we have fallen man and these conditions which must remain till in the kingdom, the Mengish Zemin, the kingdom age, the creation shall also be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the B'nai Ha Elohim, of the sons of God, the sons of Elohim. Romans chapter 8 and 21. Now, there are some key elements of the Adamic covenant. The first one is the serpent, right? The serpent. And we touched on the serpent seed. So let's understand this that the serpent, right, was Satan's tool. The serpent here in the Ganetta Aden was Satan's tool, was the adversary's tool. And that tool of the adversary was cursed. It almost reminds me when you talk about the Illuminati and the UFOs and the aliens. And they speak about the reptilians and the reptilians seem to be the ones in charge. And then you have like what I call the frogmen or the so-called greys. But if you look at the greys carefully... There's something very reptilian. They're, they're, they're similar to frogs, like frogmen on one hand, but they're very much similar to uh, frogs and reptilians. And, 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 and you can kind of see that kind of connection right there with the Satan and these tools, right? These tools, and this particular tool is the serpent, right? Satan's tool is cursed in verse 14. And also becomes Ha Elohim's illustration in nature, the illustration and nature of the effects of Chatiyat, the effects of the systemic anomaly, the effects of sin and the sin nature from the most beautiful and subtle of creatures to a loathsome reptile. So we see in the fall that even the beauty. Right, the, the original beauty is lost, right, in that fall, in that curse, right, in that fallen nature, in that cursed nature. Now, the deepest mystery of atonement is intimated here. So, through this um, serpent as an illustration, right, let's bring this up once again, right, we have one of the deepest, right, mysteries, right, the deepest mysteries of atonement, right? The finding of the true cross, the meskel, and the deepest mystery of atonement is intimated here, namely Ha Mushiach, namely Christos, right? Negro Christos, namely Christ, right? 
Christ, quote, made sin. He was made what? He was made chatiat. He was made sin for who? For us, for I and I. In doing what? In bearing, right? In bearing I and I judgment. In bearing our judgment. In bearing our Adamic nature judgment, right? And, 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 and erasing, right? Um, erasing that, 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 that pattern, that Adam, that Adam, right? Pattern, which became a damn pattern, right? A cursed pattern, right? Bringing judgment, but Yeshua HaMoshia, but Adoni was made sin, chatiat, for I and I in bearing our judgment and is typified according to its type, according to its symbol, the scriptural biblical symbol by the brazen serpent. Right? When we read Numbers chapter 21, verses 5 to 9, we read about the brazen serpent in the Old Testament, in the Old Covenant, and in the Brit Chadasha, the Hadis Kidan, the New Covenant, we read in John chapter 3, verses 14 and 15, and also in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. So we need to understand the brazen serpent Right, this type of the brazen serpent that Yeshua, that Christos, that HaMoshiach, that the Messiah, right, the, the Moshiach, Bain Ha Elohim, Christ, the Son of God, has been made, the Son of Elohim has been made Chatiat for us, bearing I and I judgment. And is, as a type, is a type of the brazen serpent that we find first in Numbers 21, 5 to 9. Then in the New Testament, in John chapter 3, verses 14 and 15, and 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. Now, why brass? Right? What is what is so particular or peculiar? Right? What is so particular or peculiar about brass? Right? Why brass? Brass. Brass. According to scripture, according to the Hebrew mind, right? According to the Hebrew mind and the Hebrew metaphysics, right? Brass, right? It speaks of judgment, right? Brass, it speaks of judgment. In the example we have in the tabernacle that Moses was told to create from that pattern that he had seen in the Shammai, in the Shemaim in heaven, we have the brazen altar, right? And the brazen altar in the tabernacle, right? In the Mishkan, in the courtyard, right? It is a symbol of Elohim's judgment, right? Of God's judgment. And also we have another, another um, instrument or furniture right in the holy tabernacle of the old covenant and this is the brazen laver right and the brazen laver right where the water was where the priests would wash right and would be able to see their reflection it speaks of self-judgment so brass it speaks of judgment in the example of the brazen altar and symbolized also in the feet when we speak of the feet of christ so in the New Testament, we find references to the feet, the woman um, uh, um, anointing his feet and wiping it with her hair and, and tears, right, of the feet of Yeshua, you understand, being nailed to that tree as, as well when he was crucified, when he was lynched, right? So this is the key right here as well. So brass speaks of judgment, right, the brazen altar. God's judgment. Then we have the laver and self-judgment, right? So we have God's judgment and then we have self-judgment, right? Now, it's very, very interesting because the first promise of a redeemer we find in verse 15, where it says, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed, right? And her seed, we're speaking spiritually here. It shall bruise thy head and thou shall bruise his heel. When we're speaking spiritually, but yet we have these very ancient physical types, right? We have this, this physical type right here, 
right? This typology, right? We have this typology, right? Verse 15, right? Where it says, and I will put enmity, hatred between thee and the woman, between the serpent and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. So speaking of generation, generationally, it shall bruise thy head or he shall bruise thy head. The seed of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent. And thou, speaking of the serpent, shall bruise his heel. So who is he? He is the redeemer, right? That is the redeemer. Here begins the highway of the sea, right? From Abel, Seth, Noah, Genesis 6, 8 to 10. We have Shem in Genesis 9, uh, verses 26 and 27. We have Abraham. In Genesis 12, verses 1 to 4, we have Yisahak. In Genesis um, 17, verses 19 to 21, we have Yaakov. In Genesis uh, 28, verses 10 to 14, we have Yehuda. In uh, Genesis 49 and 10, we have David or David. In 2 Samuel 7, 5 to 17, and then we have Amanuel. Right, Emmanuel Christos. Right, we have Emmanuel Moshiach in Isaiah 7, verses 9 to 14, Matthew 1 and 1, and verses 20 to 23, 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, and John chapter 12, verse 31. Now, it's also interesting to note that there's the changed state of the womb man. Right? There's a changed state of the womb man in verse 16. There are three particulars. One is multiplied conception. Second is motherhood is linked now with sorrow. Right? Uh, thirdly is the headship of the man. Right? The headship of the man. Genesis 1, 26 and 27 shows that there was not this headship, that there was a balance Right? Where he says, he made man, Adam, male and female, Zakar, Zakar, we, Nekebao, or Zakar and Nekebao. Right? And they were to have joint dominion in the beginning. That's how it was in the beginning. But because of this breach, right? And the ultimate responsibility being upon Adam, right? Because Adam is the one who was disobedient, Haywan or Eve was deceived. Right? And was deceived because Adam did not carry out his responsibility. This is why it says because of one man's disobedience. Right? So now we have the entrance of Khatiyat. We have the entrance into this earth, right, of this systemic anomaly, right? The, the matrix, right? The systemic anomaly, which is disorder, right? Which is disorder or the chaos factor. This makes necess necessary a headship. This is what brings on a headship, a responsibility, right? And this is invested and was invested in that primordial black man or in man, according to this world age. First Timothy 2 verses 11 to 14, Ephesians 5 verses 22 to 25, and First Corinthians 11 verses 7 to 9. Now we have the earth being cursed in verse 17 for or because of Adam, because of man. It is better for fallen man to battle with a reluctant earth than to live without toil. There is the inevitable sorrow of life. I often say it like this, that Eve's name means Hawan or Hawa means life. And you've heard it over and over again. I'm not going to say it, but people say life is effed up, right? That word effed, right, basically means and has the force of chatiyat or sin, right? Has that force of sin. And this is what brings the sorrow of life. When people say, oh, life is this and life is that. What they don't even know by saying that life is is, is, is full of this sorrow is they're referring to the beginning according to type because Hawan or Eve, Hawa means life. Her Ethiopic name, Imma Hiao, 
right? Emma Hiao, or mother of all living, right? Mother of all living, or mother of the matrix, the black woman and child, right? Now, the light occupation of Eden, Eden, change. See, in Eden, or in Eden, their condition was just to tend to the garden, right? No, no toil, no hard work, right? But all of this was changed to burdensome labor, right? To burdensome labor. And we can see, you know, we, we, we can still see this with toiling on the land, right? You know, the difficulties when, when you're really working with land many times, but especially under the curse, right? But physical death also now comes into play. In verse 19, right? Physical death now is, is brought into play. We have Romans chapter 5, verses 12 to 21. And there's a deeper study on death being spiritual, the spiritual aspects of death based on Genesis 2 and 17 and Ephesians 2 and 5, right? 2 and 5. Now, what is very, very important right here once again is just understanding this basic type right here it's concerning the serpent right in its edanic in the edanic form right is not to be thought of see people when they think of the serpent they think of a a writhing reptile you know like they whenever they talk about genesis or whatever they show you a little snake on the ground or something like that and that's what people think of but that is not the the idea of the serpent clearly that we're getting from the scripture nor from the archaeological record because there's ancient archaeological record of what for all intents and purposes appears to be some primordial serpent race there was some sort of a serpent race we find it in ancient egypt we find it in india we find it you know by different tribes around the world there was a serpent people Mm -hmm. And I maintain or submit to you that this serpent people, right, is the root of what we have as the Babylonians from the Ibab, right? Ibabel, Babel, Bab, you know, the Babel, Babylonians, right? They, they bring this chaos factor. They bring this confusion factor. We have this in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, that enmity. Right, that enmity and with that hatred, right, and that's disorder and the sin, right, coming into the world, right, because of that one man, Adam's disobedience. Now, that is the effect of the curse. The effect of the curse is this fallen nature of the reptile or the reptilian, right, the creature which lent itself to Satan. Right, or to Satan, to the adversary, may well have been, some commentators say, the most beautiful as it was the most subtle. Now, that word subtle is an interesting word, tenquilenia, right? Tenquilenia, subtle, we could say tricky, but very subtle. Subtle is the key word. We need to go into that word subtle. Right? What does subtle mean, right? Right, but it's, it was the most subtle, right? of creatures less than man, right? And I find it extremely interesting when you start to look in even ancient Egypt, right? On, on, on some of the, some of the engravings, right? Um, and, and, and the pictures and the wall paintings, and then also compare that with other ancient civilizations. Mm -hmm. We find that these were not just anomalies, but they were a whole race of ones. There's even in ancient Egypt, the one that Kebal, you know, with the two feet walking, this walking serpent, right, as well. So, you know, the winged serpent as well. So we think that the ancient peoples, when we're studying some of the UFO, Illuminati, angels and demon, Anunnaki kind of uh, tapes or videos or the YouTubes or here or there, we might think that these people were imagining this. Right, but there's no, there was no need to imagine this. This is real. The scripture even backs this up in Genesis and Bereshit, right, or in Berasi, the Orit, the Orit Zefitret. Clearly, Genesis. This is the picture, 
right? This is the picture that many people not knowing the archaeological, right, and religion and Western Gentile Christianity got the wrong interpretation, got a miscontextualization of this. But now if we, if, if we will look at the evidence and pray for wisdom, right, pray to the, the Father, Beshem Yeshua, for wisdom, for the Ruach HaKodesh, for our eyes to be open so we can see things as they are and not as we want to or people want to imagine them to be. So now traces of the beauty of the serpent, they still remain despite the curse. And this is one of the, this is why we, what you see going on with the Illuminati and this whole serpent culture coming up, it has a sense of beauty, right? It uses beauty mind or seeming beauty appealing to the lower senses the lower chakras and appealing to beauty as a replacement right for truth right every movement of the serpent as a creature if you look at the serpent right it is graceful so these traces of that many species are very beautifully colored in the serpent satan first appeared now let's note this in the serpent, Satan first appeared as an angel of light, right? In the serpent, Satan, remember the serpent was Satan's tool, that in the serpent, Satan first appeared as an angel of light, according to 2 Corinthians uh, 11 and 14. Let's go there, right? Uh Got a couple of minutes left in this uh, vlog, 2 Corinthians, all right? Let's go to 2 Corinthians 14, all right? And let's read 2 Corinthians chapter 14, all right? So here we go right here, 2 Corinthians, all right? Second, or actually 2 second, second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14. Right, chapter 11, verse 14. Right, and verse 14 says this right here. And no marvel, because it says that a warning against false teachers, right, for such are false prophets, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And we can see this over the past 500 years, right, especially in the Western Gentile so called Christianity. Right, they transform themselves as apostles of Christ, and we've learned that many of them were Luciferians. Right, and no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light, therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers remember the angels, his ministers also be transformed as ministers of what righteousness, whose end right shall be according to their works. This is a very, very interesting chapter right here, chapter 11, because this chapter also speaks about the beguiling, how the serpent beguiled Eve, and the apostle here, you know, is warning that the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, right? Through that subtleness, right? So your minds should be corrupted from the what? The simplicity that is in Hamushia. Right? In Hamushia. So this is so very interesting. Speaking of the godly zealousy, right? That zealousness, right? That's another pickup um, point right there, brothers and sisters, chapter 11, right? Because it goes on to say, For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus or another Yeshua, whom we have not preached, this whitewash, this Caesar Bogiers, this Secretia Borgia, Right, or if ye receive another spirit, where they talk about this ghost, a ghost is not holy, right? Which ye have not received, or it says another gospel, right? Like all these other so called gospels, which do not agree with his glory, with the scripture, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him, right? You might well bear with it. You know, so when we say that Yeshua HaMoshia, our black Lord and Savior, and speak about his true race, the truth of who he is according to race and his mother, many people come along because they're defending, 
right? They're defending that which they have put up with, the other Yeshua, the other spirit, right? The other gospel. My brothers and sisters, we're going to have to wrap this up right here. This is Wendem Yadin. Shalom Ras Tefari. Stay tuned. More to come. And Yeshua, right? Yeshua is the conqueror. Shalom.